Okay, so last month, one of you, the viewer, emailed me saying, oh, I saw your video where you're talking about how you've never seen the Huawei Mate X like outside of a demo area, but I have. I own one. Do you want me to like send one to you? Maybe you can make a video about it? So first of all, very generous offer and we really appreciated it, but it turns out it was a, just a little bit risky with international shipping and then just with the state of the world right now trying to insure it because it was his personal phone and we definitely wanted to get it back to him, but it wasn't fully guaranteed. So instead, we just went down the rabbit hole of trying to buy one, just seeing if I could get my hands on one here once and for all. So as it turns out, you could probably guess, it's really hard to get one here in the US. They don't want it, well, they can't ship here. But then uh, Dbrand steps in and they're like, yeah, we can, we can secure one. And if I've learned one thing over the years, it's to never doubt Dbrand's ability to secure really hard to get things. This is the same company that secured 12 PS5s and 12 Xbox Series Xs at the same time in the height of their demand. Still not sure how they pulled that off. So yeah, they got a Mate X. So here we have it, Huawei Mate XS in collaboration with Leica apparently. So the funny part about the timing of just getting my hands on it now is we have rumors saying the successor is coming really soon and I'll address that in a little bit, but I just wanted to get this phone for myself and actually see what it's about. So right at the top is the phone with the plastic with a ton of warnings on it, but that comes right off and this is the first time I'm holding the phone and wow, it's a lot thinner than I expected. But I'll get to that in a second. Behind the phone is another card with a printed set of the same warnings, the same precautions. Then underneath is the rest of the hardware that actually comes with this phone. You get your paperwork and a bumper case that I'll show you. You get a USB-C to USB-C cable. Then you also get your power adapter for fast charging and you get your USB-C wired earbuds. Okay, so I wanted to get my hands on this phone because like I said in my Royal FlexPi 2 video, I've literally never seen this phone before. And now that I'm holding it and using it, well, there's a lot of thoughts and observations that go straight to the top. So when it's closed, it looks like a normal phone, just a big phone, a 6.6 .6 inch diagonal phone. But you know, you can see the fingerprint reader doubles as a power button on the right hand side. You've got your volume rocker. The screen goes pretty close to the edges. But then of course, there's a couple obvious quirks. So you can see the fold, of course, and you can also see the USB-C port is all the way over to the right-hand side. And two, it's very smooth feeling because of course the display is what's wrapping around on the sides and they've polished and smoothed the right side to sort of look just like the screen wrapping around the left side. But when you look at it, you can kind of tell the bezel on the right is just a little thicker than their cutoff of the display on the left. Kind of reminds me of the first ever Galaxy Note Edge. So you can use it closed just like a normal phone, but that's not why you get this phone, right? You gotta be opening it up all the time to get your money's worth. So to open this phone up, you flip it over and there's a red button and you press that button and the back part of the display is spring loaded and it flips out halfway open. And then it's up to you to push it all the rest of the way open and it sort of snaps into place when it's flat. And then you've got your full size, eight inch, 2480 by 2200 OLED canvas for all the productivity and big screen tasks in the world. Okay, so a couple of thoughts. So first of all, I was immediately pretty struck by how thin this is. It's 5.5 millimeters thick at the thin part. And that of course means when you fold it over, that's 11 millimeters, that's not much thicker than a normal smartphone these days. But the reason this whole thing is able to be so thin is mainly because these wings of the phone, as I'll call them, are basically just screen and battery. So the total combined battery is 4,500 milliamp hours with some battery in each side, but pretty much all the rest of the components of this phone are packed into this column over here that low key kind of acts as a grip when you start to get used to holding it. But that's why the USB-C port is over here. That's where the Kirin 990 processor and eight gigs of RAM and half a terabyte of storage are. And that's of course where all the cameras are. There's no camera cutouts for a selfie camera or anything like that. All of the cameras live over here in this column. And there's four of them. There's a 40 megapixel primary camera, an ultra wide, a 3X telephoto zoom, and a depth sensor. And this isn't a review of these, of course, this is just my impressions, but I, I do like the idea that in a folding phone, you can take advantage of the main cameras for everything, including selfie stuff. So with the Mate XS, you hit the button to switch to a selfie, 
and then you literally flip the phone around and you're using those huge high quality main cameras to take selfies. So you can use the ultra wide or even the zoom if you're into that. And then also because this is screen on the back, it's off most of the time, but if you want to hit this button and turn the back screen on, now you can show people as you're taking a photo of them what that photo is gonna look like. So yeah, there you are. So now with the viewfinder mirrored on the back, you can imagine being able to hand the phone to someone and like direct them exactly how to take the photo based on what you see. So I feel like we all kind of know Huawei's software experience here in the US is a bit nuked because they don't have a relationship with the US anymore. And so even if you are able to get the phone here, there's no Google Play services, it's not ideal. But there are some pretty nice software features in here where you get control over app scaling. So some apps get column support on the big screen. So there's a lot of good stuff, but, and this is the other side of the coin, there's downsides too, and you'll probably saw these coming. So the crease, there's no getting around it. There's still a crease on folding phones and it can kind of catch your eye sometimes, but I feel like this is as good as it gets with the current tech. When you're actually looking at the contents of what's on the screen, you really don't notice the crease. It's just when you run your fingers straight over it or it catches a light a certain way, then you do notice it. But speaking of catching the light a certain way, the built-in screen protector that's on this phone, which is super important for protecting the super soft, flexible OLED, doesn't uniformly go up to the edges. So there's notches and cutouts everywhere and it caught my eye all the time. So I'm not gonna pull it off because I know better, <laughs> I know better than that, but the dust collecting on these uneven edges and just the way the light hits it, you can't tell me that wouldn't eventually bother you a little bit. But hey, better to have a screen protector than not because unfortunately I've placed this phone down like a normal phone a few too many times and I've ended up with some scratches on the back plastic because, well, when you put it down, it literally touches the ground. So if you put it on a desk, that plastic is touching a desk. If there's any sort of grit or any particles or materials at all on that surface, that's going up straight against the plastic. And most phones are cool with that, of course, but this plastic screen protector is like, uh, scratches out a level one with deeper grooves at a level breathing too hard. So I'm not shocked that it's already starting to see some marks, but of course the whole point is you get the marks in the screen protector and you're not damaging the screen. Basically the bumper case that comes with this phone is like the best possible solution because then it sort of raises it up off of whatever surface you put it down on. So if you're super, never wanna get any sort of scratches on it, put the bumper case on, it's a little less elegant, but then you don't get scratches. And then the hinge here on the XS is slightly improved from the X. So you can see there's these dust caps now and the metal back to the hinge to keep it almost completely gapless when it's folding. But of course, it's still not gonna be water or dust resistant or anything. They're just doing the best they can. So at the end of the day, on one hand, this feels like the most advanced, sexiest folding phone I've ever seen. It's, it's pretty stunning hardware. But on the other hand, like I was saying in the FlexPie video, I'll link it below, it's just, it's just not quite technically ready to be doing this outside fold thing. So I'm really curious about the next version because like I said, word on the street is the Huawei Mate X2 or whatever this next version is called is supposedly coming out within the next month or so. And headlines suggest it's gonna be switching to the inside folding design like the Galaxy Fold, which would make a lot of sense given the current state of the tech. And, you know, there's a couple other things I'd like to see. I'd like to see 120 Hertz display I like to see whole, maybe a slightly bigger battery. I know they want to keep it all thin and sexy like this, but yeah, I'm, I'm very curious now about how folding stuff goes forward. Seeing how this ended up, you know, do we go straight to folding on the inside and then come back to the outside fold when the folding screen tech is better? We'll see. Let me know what your thoughts are below if you think we should still do the outside fold stuff or not. But that's pretty much it. I'm glad I finally got my hands on this phone and uh, now I know. That's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.